out Jamaica, baby, they made me to be the greatest Serving the deed of my creators, fresh off of my high haters It's the king again, Magdalene, Sophie bragging and boasting Yo, what up, y'all? It's your boy Dollars Welcome back to the channel It's another day, another dollar video and i'm gonna be reacting to tales of toronto the crazy story of robin banks a lot of y'all been hitting me up asking me to react to this so you know your boy got you with the reactions anyway shout out to this channel child support man go show him some love go subscribe to his channel he's been putting out a lot of documentaries and um you know high quality stuff too seems like he does his homework so i could appreciate that and also yeah man uh i, I don't think i ever reacted to any documentaries on Robin Banks? Did he have a Savage Savage from the Six documentary? Because y'all know I did a whole bunch of Savages from the Six, but I, I don't remember reacting to any like story about Robin Banks. So yeah, man, let's hop in this and see what he's talking about, man. Yeah, y'all yeah, think the rappers actually watch their own documentaries? And there's like a new video on them, they watch it. Let the people know, who is Robin Banks? Robin has been lighting up the city for a long time, you know what I mean? Robin's work ethic is crazy. Facts. It's crazy. When you guys are making a top list of influential rappers in Toronto, do me a favor, please have Robin Banks in the top five, man. Because Robin Banks is one of the most influential rappers to ever. We are following breaking news out of York Region this morning. Police are on the scene of a triple shooting at a hookah lounge. CP24's Cam Woolley has been live at the scene all morning. So, Cam, uh, what happened here? Born February 27, 1995, 28-year-old Libin Randall, a.k.a. Robin Banks, is a rapper reigning from Toronto. During the late 90s, Robin's family immigrated from Somalia to a neighborhood in Northside Jane and Finch called Driftwood. At this point, in I didn't even know he was Somalian. Was he don't look Somalian. Headlines due to the reoccurring gang violence in the area. By 2007, the troubled neighborhood would be taken over by a crypt. That's a nice shoddy right there. Spanning all over Canada. With the wood grain? They were dubbed the Driftwood Crips. It took months of planning, but between 1 and 5 a.m. yesterday morning, police arrested nearly 100 people and seized more than $50,000 worth of fentanyl in Project Chronic, a Damn. series of raids that took place across southern Ontario and Sudbury. These are some of the weapons police took off the streets yesterday in the Project Chronic raids, which targeted the notorious Driftwood Crips gang. The group that we are alleging has shown an extreme propensity for violence in their shootings of rival gang members. So it seems like they always raiding Driftwood. It was Project Marvel members and then Project Chronicle. Numerous reckless acts, including shootings, kidnappings, firearm offenses. Police have targeted the Driftwood Crips before. Yeah, we know about those kidnappings. <laughs> They say the gang is headquartered in Toronto, but has cells across Ontario and several western provinces. Hmm. The Driftwood Crips have a clear hierarchy, with some of its leaders even operating and directing from within correctional facilities. <coughs> Bundog, no, with violent <laughs> crime steadily increasing in the community they now call home, the Randall family would attempt to pave a path of safety for young Robin by placing him into intramural sports. Robin specifically excelled in soccer. By 2009, at the age of 14, he joined the Downsview Park Youth Indoor Soccer. Yeah, y'all noticed that a lot of the times, a lot, a lot of these rappers be talented in sports, bro. Sometimes I wonder, like, yo, maybe they should have just stuck to playing sports, like, you know, because there's a lot of rappers that don't even make it, but they was good at basketball, football. I remember Snoop Dogg. He was, like, actually one of the top uh, high school football players, but then he chose rap. But Snoop Dogg had a good career, though. That's the difference. For league. Judging by his stats, Robin was without a doubt the star of his team. In wow, his last six games, bro. He scored three hat tricks and led his team in points and goals at the bro, end of the season. Bro, you should have stuck to the Although soccer. Although Robin had a promising future in soccer, he would quit the following year to chase his passion for music. Yo, bro, if he would have been a soccer player, you probably would have been, you would have made way more money than being a rapper. You feel me? Your career would have been up. By 2011, he would drop his first song on SoundCloud, marking the beginning of his rap career. He would continue to put out songs, all of which have since been deleted, until 2014, when he would finally get his first major break. He deleted his early songs? Why?
October 3rd, 2014, a now 19-year-old Robin Banks, along with fellow Driftwood artist Big Bills, would drop a song titled Don't Try Me. During this time, Chicago Drill was taking over the music scene and its influence had clearly reached Driftwood. The mm. grungy visuals started off with Robin shouting out his fellow Somalis, something he was known to do throughout his career. Later in the video, he can be seen amongst a crowd of known Driftwood Crips such as GD, 21 Neat, and the late 22 Neat. The song gained Damn, serious they mad young, upon dude. release as the visuals and lyrics depicted a side of Toronto many hadn't seen before. At first glance, it would be safe to label Robin as a drill rapper, but just three months after the release of the hit song, he would drop a single that not only allowed him to completely break away from the drill rapper label, but also catapult himself towards mainstream success. Ooh, classic. Check. To bring in the new year, Robin would drop arguably his best song to date. The track titled, Up Next, was a complete 180 of what he had put out previously. His flow was more melodic, the hook was super catchy, and the visuals were full of energy. Some have even compared him to the melodic rap godfather himself, Speaker Knockers. Yeah. The release of the hit I could song see the influence. the birth of his signature phrase. I'm TT right now. But it also marked the beginning of a brand new generation of Toronto rap. Listen, when an artist copies another artist's style, I don't want to say copy because everybody is influenced by somebody else, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like every rapper, even your favorite rapper, he's influenced by his favorite rapper. So I mean, when I was rapping, my influences was like Lloyd Banks, you know what I'm saying? Fabulous, Cassidy, Joel. That was my influence because they was punchlines dudes. And me, I got punchlines too. I could rap, bro. Those of you know I could rap, some of you probably don't, but I, I still got it. I just, I don't know, bro. The music shit too demonic for me to even pursue it. And plus you got to realize there's powers in your words, bro. So when you're speaking certain things and you're talking about certain things you are bringing that upon you so if i'm rapping about shooting drug dealing killing and all this type of shit it's not a good thing so that's why i felt back all right but not to get sidetracked i don't mind when somebody's influenced as long as they are good bro you know what i'm saying like if you're gonna take a style or use somebody's style but you do it the right way and it sounds dope i'm not gonna be mad at it making a hit song as hard as it is but following up with another banger is even harder. Mm. For Robin, however, it was just another day at the office. Now nah, he had just hits. One week I ain't gonna hold you. After the release of Up Next, he would drop a song titled A Bye A Bye. Robin goes back to his roots with this song, as his grungy Chicago drill inspired flow makes a return. But what makes the song stand out is neither the bars or the beat, but it's this man, Kwasi Skeen Peters, aka Wasi. Wasi was not only a close friend of Robin, but he was also a known Driftwood Crip. Six months after appearing in the music video for A Bye A Bye, Wasi would be on the run for mm. the double murder of two notorious dicks and bloods. His run from the police wouldn't last long as he would be caught at a downtown Toronto nightclub with several other Driftwood members. When Toronto police attempted to apprehend Wasi, he began shooting at them. The officers returned fire. In the end, Wasi was killed by a single gunshot wound. If not for nothing, bro, at least I could say, you know what, he went out like a G, bro. Because there's a lot of dudes that they so quick to kill their own people, right? Like, they so quick to gangbang on people that look like them, people that come from the same environments as them. But when the police come, they're cowards. He said, you know what? He kept that same energy with everybody. So I, could, I respect that shit. Real talk. Not saying that that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's just, you know, I could, I could see, like, you know, at least he went out like a G and he kept the same energy with everybody. On to the chest. Friends and family of Wasi were left mourning, especially Robin Banks. Four months after Wasi's death, Robin, along with several other Driftwood affiliates, including Pressa, GD, and FB, would release a song in remembrance of their fallen member called Was Gang. GD Back up, back up. Hey, Quartz Gang, SOS, we want gang. 
I love my niggas, so you know I'm about my niggas. If you diss my niggas, then you know. November 14th, 2015, a Toronto classic would be born. Many would regard it as the Kickstarter for Press's career, while some would even say it changed the entire scene. But all in all, everybody loved it. That's a heavy the tune right there. So even a lot of you. Artists in the States <laughs> were even singing along to it. I love my niggas, so you know I'm about my Oh shit, two seats. And for all those people that be crying that yo know, America doesn't support Canadian artists, look, that's cap right there. You got an American artist singing Canadian lyrics, bro. Know what I'm saying if the music is good, people will support it, bro. That's all it is. Put out some good music and stop crying, bro. At this point, Robin Banks had the scene in the palm of his hands as almost every track he put out since. Wasn't Mick Mill gonna sign him or some shit like that? Release, and now, at the peak of his career, Robin didn't hesitate to share the limelight with his fellow members. He even went out of his way to collaborate with artists from different hoods. That's how you do it. Something that was rare within the city's underground rap scene. By November of 2015, Robin pushed the limits and curated a UK tour alongside Top wow. 5, who had just gone viral for his hit song Hall of Fame, which featured Robin. It, it looked like he had it all mapped out, bro. You know what I'm saying? Collaborating with other artists that were underground like him, making big moves. You know, like I guarantee you he would have been a big fixture in that music scene if that shit never happened to him. <laughs> Super 2015 was an amazing year for the Toronto music scene and the same energy would be carried into the new year. 2016 was arguably one of Toronto's best years as it kicked off with Drake dropping his highly anticipated album, Views, Views I ain't gonna hold you. I have Views on the rotation heavy. I ain't gonna lie. Feel me? Six time platinum. Robin followed Definitely in a rotation. by releasing a remix to the hit single off the Especially with the whole Meek and Drake beef that was going down. That was a crazy time in music. The album called Controller, along with a few solo records. He even went on a rare press run, going on interviews, talking about the struggles of being a rising star from the streets of Driftwood. Growing up in Driftwood, it can get tough sometimes. Neighborhood just get in shot you know what it is though bro artists gotta just realize bro when you have somebody that's talented that can really do something with the music can really bring opportunities to their hood and their homies y'all gotta protect the bag and the people around the artists gotta realize look tell talk to your mans tell them look you ain't gotta be out here doing no dumb shit just sit back go to the studio go to these shows we're gonna hold you down stay out of trouble feel me that's what these people got to realize. But then you got dudes that that's around you that's secretly hating because they feel like once you blow up, you're going to leave them behind or they just jealous. But, you know, you got to have the the third eye open to see that shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? You can see who's real, who's not, who, who has your back, who's really supporting you. So, you know, for artists out there, bro, man, if you actually got talent and you could do something musically, don't prove you don't gotta prove nothing to nobody bro there's a lot of rappers that are blowing up that's not even like that they're not even real they're not even doing no street shit gang shit but they still blowing up musically you know what i'm saying because the music is wwe now bro the fans want you to crash out and then when you crash out they're gonna be like oh you're an idiot to be honest with you you know our known for is bad things so all we do is get bothered by the police right not saying that there's some dudes that's really real and they do music view us, like yeah we grew up in a ghetto but still struggle, you know we can make it out too like if we set our mind to it we can do whatever we want uh i heard like oh ram banks and his and his posse no those are the bad guys yeah Yo, mm. the, 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 the bad this bad that it's just like why do you think we're the bad guys is it from the neighborhood we're from because of the history he has yeah because that doesn't determine me. You see my music. I started off with the rap, yeah. then I switched it all into the turn up, mm -hmm. the girls, the party, showing them we have fun. If yeah, that's one thing too. That's so true. Like nowadays, every artist want to put out some gangster shit, but you got to be able to switch it up too. I like the turn up music. I like the joint for the females too. You know what I'm saying? Party music. Not everybody want to be on demon time. Some people just want to have fun. So I, I like that about him that he did have songs that was turn up is you know what i'm saying make you want to pop a molly or something like you stop. we say who you are 
Don't pop don't no mollies. True. How come you don't hear that in my lyrics? You know that's so 2010. I just, I just that's that's one thing I don't understand in the city. Like how many shows have you? How many shows have you had out here? Like Toronto. Yeah, I could probably count with like one hand. Mm. They don't let me have no shows in the city. Why? Like yeah, I said, promoters tried to yeah. book you and shit. Like yeah. Just the police shut everything down. If you're not like an artist like Drake of the weekend or from the states, they don't let them perform, bro. That sucks. Because that everybody's too busy trying to look cool on their own or. Too That's why, bro. At one point in my life, like I wanted to leave America, and I always said, like, y'all wouldn't mind going to Canada because I thought it would be better. You know, free healthcare, it's cleaner, and you know, I just thought it would be better. But then I started learning about the government over there, and they on some bullshit, bro. The government, Canada, I mean, America is no better, bro. Our, our government is sad as fuck right now, bro. Like, I'm ashamed to be be here, but, you know, you don't get to choose where you where you born. So, you know, like, yeah, like, uh, all the, the stuff with the internet, how they block you guys from watching certain things and all that, and I ain't with that shit, bro. Worried about what people would think of, yeah. about them if they were to listen to a certain rapper or musician, but... We just all gotta put our pride to the side and our chest down, you know? Yo, yo, rewind now, rewind now. Let me say it. <laughs> yo, shout out Robin Banks and FDB, hardest in the world. By the end of 2016, Robin would have generated a massive fan base spanning from Canada to the US and even Europe. He would end the year off in style by releasing his hit song, Priceless. It would reach the same virality as Wasp Gang and would later earn its own gold plaque. Priceless has been streamed over 8 million times on Damn. just Spotify alone, while the M Works directed music video is approaching 7 million views on YouTube. After the release of the hit song, rapper Meek Mill would repost it on his Instagram story, sparking rumors he was signing Robin to a record deal. Well, the funny thing is, um, would Robin Banks have signed to Meek Mill knowing that Meek and Drake had beef at that time? Maybe it was just a ploy of Meek Mill trying to be like, oh, well, look, I'm showing more love to Toronto artists than Drake is. So maybe that was like a chess move. These rumors were further fueled when Robin was spotted at a celebration party at Cameo Lounge located in Vaughan on April 3rd, 2017, just a few months after Meek Mill's shout out. Hmm. Friends and family would come out to show their support for the rising star, but in the midst of the celebrations, Robin would make his way towards the outdoor patio for a smoke break. It is said Robin was there for several minutes, congregating with others in the area, when within seconds, things would take a turn for the worst. Where the hell he be getting all this old footage from, bro? YouTube? The hip-hop community is identifying the man critically... Hey, this the same dude that Mike Tyson pressed, bro. <laughs> Yo, Mike pressed the shit out you, boy. Hurt in a triple that shooting shit was hilarious. Woodbridge, even though the police have not confirmed the victim's name. With more, we're joined live on the phone by Jesse Plunkett, editor-in-chief of the web publication Hip Hop Canada. Thanks for joining us. So what have you heard about Robin Banks' connection to this shooting? Listen, while he's on the come up, somebody was trying to gun him down, all right? Basically, he was up in a club. In and again, general, there's jealousy clubs. around uh, music community. That's why I don't like clubs, bro. People start to do good. You never know. Bars, clubs. Uh, who, who that makes you a target of. At this hookah lounge behind us Police just say it appears a gun a. battle started inside around 2.40 this morning. Robin carried Banks itself outside into the parking lot. Police say that there were shots. People saying R.I.P. before they even and know that he's dead. Video like, come on. Scene left three people shot, sending a man in his 20s to hospital with life-threatening injuries. Two others. A man and a woman rushed to hospital with serious injuries. Police are investigating whether they were targeted or just victims of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. I like time. the dramatic music, child support. While Robin Banks was out smoking on the outdoor patio, two gunmen approached him and fired dozens of shots. He was hit 14 times. Nine bullets tore through his legs, four pierced his upper torso, while the final bullet went through his neck, mm. severing his spinal cord. Minutes Damn. after the shooting, Sergeant Sadu of Toronto Police witnessed a Honda Accord traveling at a high rate of speed, then running a red light, less than a block away from the scene of the crime. So did they catch Sergeant the shooters? Sardou activated his police emergency lights and conducted a traffic stop on the Honda. In the vehicle were two men. 
Rashawn Anderson and Nicholas Roden. Sergeant Sadu noticed Nicholas to be extremely nervous. His hands were shaking and he was trembling uncontrollably. In contrast, his passenger Rashawn Anderson appeared relaxed and was reclined in the mm. passenger seat. We know, who, produced we know who told them. His driver's <laughs> license when asked to, but couldn't provide the registration for the vehicle. After a few moments, Sergeant Sadu asked both men why they were in such a hurry. The pair advised the officer that they were fleeing the scene of a shooting at the Cameo Lounge. When Nicholas's name was ran through the criminal database, it revealed he had a lengthy and violent criminal record. Sergeant Sadu immediately formed a suspicion both men may have been involved in the shooting, so he called for backup. I would have had a better excuse than that. Look, my girlfriend, she's giving birth. I'm not trying to miss the birth of my child. Something, bro. My grandma, something, bro. Like, my mom just got an ax. Something. I would have not said that shit. They were subsequently detained and searched. It was at this point when Rashawn would provide officers with a fake name. He identified himself as Ernest Boateng, a man that was the victim of an apparent hit in Rexdale years prior. One officer conducted a search of the interior of the Honda, locating a satchel and a bandana in the back seat. Mm. In the trunk of the Honda, officers also discovered what appeared to be two guns. Rushon and Nicholas were subsequently arrested and sent to the department for questioning. They didn't have During a better stash than that? Investigators were able to uncover key information. Not only did they figure out Rushon's real name, but they discovered both men resided in Rixdale and had deep ties to some of the gangs in the area, including IDS and the Jamestown Crips. Both gangs have a storied rivalry with Robin's crew, the Driftwood Crips. Investigators Crip were also able to uncover information indicating Nicholas had been shot a few months prior to the incident. However, in the midst of the interrogations, a forensics team notified investigators that the weapons found in the vehicle were actually fake. So despite the mm. numerous red flags and after hours of interrogation, they had no choice but to release both men. Damn, they got lucky then. Well, we are live with Stephanie Smythe at the Breaking News Desk with some breaking news. Steph, what do you got? Well, we're uh, learning that York Regional Police have been working hard and have quickly come out with some identities that people they're looking for in connection with that triple shooting at the Hookah Lounge, the nightclub in uh, York Region, early on Monday morning at about 2.42 a.m. So they have released photos of these two men wanted in connection with this triple shooting. Uh, Roshan, Roshan Anderson, 19 years of age, is wanted for attempted murder and Nicholas Roden, 26 years So they released them and then they wanted went after them again? Murder. Two days would go by before investigators were able to get their hands on footage in the area from the night of the incident. What cameras managed to capture completely shocked them. They caught not only both Rashawn and Nicholas shooting Robin, but also them escaping, running a red light, and being pulled over by Sergeant Sadu. Realizing they had made a grave mistake by releasing Rushon and Nicholas, what happened to the guns? Investigators gun, immediately issued Canada-wide warrants for both men the same day they reviewed. I would have got out of town. They let me go. Old I'm Rashawn dipping. Anderson surrendered to York Regional Police the next day, while 22-year-old Nicholas Roden went on the run, hmm. but was captured within three months. On July 25th, both men were officially charged with the attempted murder of Robin Banks. When news of the shooting initially broke out. Rumors spread like wildfire suggesting Robin had died at the scene, but they were quickly put out when sources close to him confirmed he was still alive, but unresponsive. Fans began using the Pray for Robin Banks hashtag over social media to send their blessings and prayers, while Meek Mill shared a photo of Robin on Instagram with a caption that read, Pray for the kid, which has since been liked over 30,000 times. Meanwhile, Driftwood residents would organize a fundraiser for him to help pay for medical costs, and although nobody really knew the extent of Robin's injuries, everyone remained hopeful. When you got the neighborhood putting up, like, you know, money for you, you must have been doing some good in the hood, you know? Nearly eight months would go by with little to he no updates on his condition. He wasn't an asshole or something, like, they actually liked him. Until the night before him. Christmas, when he would make his first public appearance since the incident. I'm Toronto's melodic trap star, they thought they got me. Then I pulled up fast car, my fashion caught a body. December 24th, 2017, after months of no updates from the recovering artist, Robin would drop a surprise music video. 
Berserk was a song off his latest album, Still Here, and highlighted everything fans loved about him. However, the release of the music video revealed for the first time the true gruesome nature of Robin's injuries. Mm. He is now paralyzed from the neck down and wheelchair bound. As expected, Robin was mocked relentlessly by haters and especially the ops, but somehow, he managed to block out the noise and continued to do what he does best, making hit records. Big up to him for that, man. To survive what he survived and still come out putting out music, bro, some people would just quit. Like, they would be on some, like, yo, I don't even want to do this shit no more. They'd get depressed. You know, they probably wouldn't even want to be alive, but man's is still pushing forward, bro. You got to respect that. Gosh. I'm from a block where you grow up and uh, you gotta sell some dope just to get you some. Being able to rap after taking 14 shots is a mm. remarkable feat alone, but making multiple hit records while paralyzed from the neck down is just a different level of talent. Slums would be the first example of Robin's evolution into becoming one of the goats of Toronto's rap scene. The track, which is now sitting at more than 2 million views on YouTube, celebrates his crew and shows love to the block that stood by him when he was down. Throughout 2018 and 2019, Robin would put out hit after hit, impressing fans and fellow rappers as his impairments clearly didn't slow him down. During these pivotal years, Robin would not only release the visuals for his hit records, One of Mine and Downfall, both of which have accumulated more than 5 million views on YouTube, but he would also release the critically acclaimed Northside Jane tape. Robin ended off 2019 with a statement, You can slow him down, but he's not planning on going anywhere but to the top of the rap game. Man's got 16. And some people run in arm. Life. Ooh. That's some shots fired. I wonder why he was shaking in that car, bro. Did you, Damn. Uh, did you know what was happening? Did you see it happen? Uh, what do you mean? Did you see these people run in? Oh, no, not really. It was just like as soon as we stepped out smoking a cigarette, I let me in a surprise, right? That's about it. Damn. Really and truly. Shot off my legs. Shit could hit the fan in the blink of an eye, y'all. In a blink of an eye. like trying to drag my feet in, right? So as I was trying to do that, I couldn't do it. I couldn't drag my feet. And then the last shot that hit my neck is what took me down. Did you pass that? No. No, we're your phone recording. The whole time I was blessed, no? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I was good until up until I got into the ambulance. And then... I just don't remember nothing after that, like, it just passed it on. Really, in my mind, I was saying these got me, like, you know? Damn. Like, But then, like, I was kind of high at the same time, like, as I was beating out, like, it was a weird feeling, like, I just felt... Outer body experience. Hmm. Robin's run from 2015 to 2019, without a doubt, set the blueprint for all underground rappers in Toronto. Not only did he put his block and multiple artists on the map, but he did it selflessly. His crazy story is clearly one full of ups and downs, but as of now, I think it's safe to say Robin Banks has officially cemented himself as one of the greatest rappers to ever come out of the Screwface capital. Thank you guys for watching. Alright man, I think this was one of the better um, documentary style videos from Child Support, man. Big up to him. Um, yeah, like, um, I don't really got too much to say about this. You know, I've, this is all information that I was privy to already. Again, it's just, you know, I can admire how this guy still puts out music after going through what he, what he went through. It must have been terrifying, you know, when shit hit the fan, you get shot, you don't know if you're going to make it. You know, it's just like you have a promising career, things are looking up for you, and it can get cut short in a blink of an eye, man. So that's why kids don't take life for granted. Every time you wake up, thank, thank God for waking up opening your eyes and you know even on the other side of it these dudes threw their life away for nothing you know what i'm saying like they threw their life away over some bullshit now one dude got life one dude got 16 years bro you know what i'm saying there's more to life than this bullshit but uh 
yeah man if you guys enjoyed this reaction don't forget hit that like button and subscribe um if you guys want to recommend me some music let me know in the comments or you can follow me on instagram which is the fastest way to get my attention send me a dm and uh yeah, it's your boy dollars we off this for my time goes by they gon' raise a nigga jersey in the sky treat a nigga right big dreaming all my life sure they want to get some air i go and get up when i fly taking off on these niggas i retire the minute i catch fire i smoked them all before just revisiting the high